In this video, I'll talk you through stages 3 and 4 of Elizabeth's Literature Review on Interfaith Dialogue. Stage 3 was to expand the scope of the Literature Review, and many of the tasks undertaken were the same as those discussed in the videos about Stage 1 and Stage 2. In Stage 3, Elizabeth added more articles to the project in a piecemeal fashion. She used the same search criteria, the same process of downloading and naming the article, reading it, highlighting it and adding it to the project. But she added documents to the project in smaller batches. This helped avoid the tedium of adding the citation, abstract and notes to the file description for several dozen resources at a time, and also because Elizabeth found it overwhelming to code more than 10 literature resources at a time. Each new batch of resources was coded according to the existing categories that had been rationalised in Stage 2. Where Elizabeth identified text in a resource that related to a new concept, for which she didn't already have a code, she created a new code, but this time immediately categorised it into one of her categories, gave it a code definition and dated it. Because she was adding new resources to the project in small batches, she repeated these steps several times. So this stage comprises several iterative cycles of identifying resources, familiarising with them, integrating the resources and categorising them, and you can see this process in the earlier videos in this series. The fourth stage was to identify the major themes in the literature. In order to generate the themes, Elizabeth reflected on her previous work, and in doing so, she began identifying relationships between the categorised codes. To capture these relationships, Elizabeth linked codes to one another using relationships and grouped them using sets. So that's what I'll now show you in the NVivo project in this video. First, Elizabeth reviewed the codes within each category by opening up the nodes, reviewing the coded references and reviewing her memos about the categories. Here you can see, as a reminder, the list of nodes with their prefix categories. So what she did was open up each one review the data coded there, go back and find her memos, and reread what she had written previously. This allowed her to think about the connections that she wanted to make between codes. Once she decided on two codes that she wanted to link, she went to the relationship folder and created the relationship. So I'll just close this down and show that to you. The relationships are sitting under the codes area, and here you can see some relationships that have already been created. And these capture the analytic connections that Elizabeth identified between the codes. If we look at the type column, you can see that there are various different relationship types. Elizabeth created these in the relationship types folder, which is here. And there you can see them all listed. To do that, all you need to do is to right click, create a new relationship type and add in the information. I'll just create one now quickly, decide the direction, click OK and then you've created a new relationship type. And these are the relationship types that Elizabeth used to connect codes. In order to create the relationship, then again we can do that just by right clicking, creating a new relationship in that folder, and then we have to choose where we want it to go from by hitting that select button, choosing a node, I'll just choose one randomly to quickly show you, choosing where we want it to go to, and then choosing the relationship type. And you can see that we can also create a new relationship type at this point if we realise as we're doing it that we haven't got one already. Relationships are nodes in NVivo, meaning that evidence that substantiates the association that the relationship node represents can optionally be coded there. You can see, though, by looking at the Files and References column, that Elizabeth didn't actually do this. She was just using the relationship nodes to capture the associations she was seeing, and having them in this list view meant she could easily see and access them whenever she needed to. How codes are linked together as part of your analytic process. Liz link codes together using relationship nodes, as I've demonstrated, rather than by connecting nodes in a map, because she thinks hierarchically rather than visually. You can, though, link codes either way, but the functionality of each way of linking codes does differ. 
For example, connecting codes in a map doesn't create a new node at which the evidence for the relationship can be coded, as is the case when using the relationship nodes. Therefore, deciding on which way to connect codes will partly depend on what you intend to do subsequently. After Elizabeth had created relationships between codes, she then created categories using sets to represent the themes. So here we are in the sets folder, we can see the sets listed. She first created an empty set with a relevant name and then added codes to it using the add set members option. So I'll just show you how to do that. Right click to create a new set. Give it a name, an option a description. And then you can right click on that set to add set members. And there you can see them in the list view with shortcut icons telling you that we have just gathered them together in this set. Although it is possible to put the same code in multiple different sets in Envivo, Elizabeth didn't do this. Her code sets were mutually exclusive. But as you can see uh, by looking at this one, the categorized codes, which are identified by the prefixes, were not always related directly to the themes. In the dialogue theory code set, we can see we have all the DT prefixed codes, but in other sets, that's not always the case. So here we have, in the practice of interface dialogue, we have challenge codes, as well as other prefixed codes. In addition to creating new sets, Elizabeth also assigned colours to the codes, and you can see in the list the colours associated in the relevant column. Colouring codes in this way was particularly important for Elizabeth's project for several different reasons. Firstly, they acted as a visual signal for the theme that each code represented. So when I open an article, I'll just go and find one here, I've got the coding stripes on view in the margin already, and you just need to make sure that you're using the item colors for the coding stripes. And then when you scroll down, you'll see the colored stripes corresponding to the colors assigned to the nodes. In addition to seeing them in the code margin, these colors were also particularly important for Elizabeth because they corresponded to the colors of highlighting and tabs that she had used in her hard copy books. So in this way, she was able to link the work she was doing in the Envivo project with coding with her hard copy resources.